What if you had an unlimited supply of alcohol? Okay, not that kind of alcohol. Alcohol for cleaning resin 3D printed parts. Alcohol is a bit expensive and we need to use a fair amount of it. So if I had an unlimited supply, and I guess if there was no impact on the environment by using new alcohol all the time, I would always clean my parts with fresh new alcohol and I'd get cleaner parts. Well today we're gonna try to clean and purify dirty alcohol, cheap and environmentally conscious. And we're gonna see if we can turn this into this. First, let's talk about the way I'm not gonna do it. I've seen people on Facebook say they're recycling alcohol using a distiller. A distiller heats up a liquid to a boiling point where it evaporates and turns into a vapor, rising, leaving the solids behind. Then the vapor collects as condensation, turns back into a liquid, and drips down into a container. In the end, you have pretty much clean alcohol in the container and all the contaminants are separated out. So for me, I just don't feel comfortable doing this. Purifying alcohol in a distiller and heating it up seems dangerous. Alcohol is extremely combustible. I mean, the alcohol I use, denatured alcohol, says fuel right on the container, and all it takes is a spark. But what do you think? Would you feel comfortable doing it? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna to try to recycle alcohol without using any heat or electricity and without any additives. This method is very affordable and it costs only a few cents per gallon. A month or so ago, I stumbled on a YouTube video where someone used a gravity filter to purify alcohol. I'll leave a link to that video in the description, but I'm gonna try it out and see if it really works. I made my own version of the filter shown in that video. Mine is smaller and less expensive so that we can process the alcohol in smaller batches. If it works, we're gonna save a lot of money. Let's see what happens. So this is a ceramic water filter. This outer shell is ceramic and has a pore size of 0.2 to 0.5 microns. That means it shouldn't allow any particles smaller than about 0.5 microns through. Inside this dome is charcoal, which also helps to clean the liquid. I got these on Amazon and they are very affordable at around $25 for two filters. Each one is rated to filter as much as 1,000 gallons of drinking water. You're also gonna need two buckets with tight fitting lids. I got these at Ace for under $10 for the pair. I wish these lids were a little more sturdy and thicker, but these will work fine for now. Assembly is very simple. Drill a hole in the bottom of the bucket, and then one in the middle of one of the lids. The rubber seal goes on first to keep it from leaking. Then screw the filter through the bucket and into the lid below. And tighten the nut, and then put the bottom lid on the collection bucket. And here's my assembled alcohol gravity filter. Pretty simple. Only took a couple of minutes to assemble. The first thing I did was to prime the filter. Normally these filters are used for water filtration and you start by soaking them in water. We don't want to add any water to the mix, so instead my first step was to run a batch of clean alcohol through it. That should thoroughly prime the filter. So here's the first issue. The filter is not incredibly fast. It's going to take probably a half a day to run a gallon through here. If you have a larger bucket, you can fit two filters in there side by side and it will work twice as fast. I'm also hoping that it will take out some of the smell. I hate the smell of isopropyl or rubbing alcohol, otherwise known as IPA. The smell of it gives me headaches. So as a test, I made a second filter with these smaller buckets and I'm running a batch of clean IPA through this one to see if it changes the smell. So while these first two batches are running, let's talk about why IPA and denatured alcohol needs to smell so bad and why it's poisonous. Well, during Prohibition, the government wanted to limit and control the consumption of alcohol. And more importantly, they wanted to tax it. But alcohol was still needed for other purposes, like sterilizing, disinfecting, manufacturing, and chemical processes. Bootleggers started stealing industrial alcohol and reselling it in speakeasies for consumption. So the government ordered those alcohols to be denatured or to be made not natural, rendering them poisonous, smelly, and foul tasting. Again, this was to try to prevent consumption of alcohol during Prohibition and later to make sure that no one consumed alcohol without paying the government for the privilege. In the denaturing process, they add a poisonous version of alcohol, methanol, and also some bitters so that you won't want to drink it. And those also make it smell bad. In fact, during Prohibition, the early methods of denaturing were deemed to not be harsh enough and the government demanded that even more methyl alcohol be added, up to 10%. And this led to the deaths of about 10,000 people before the end of Prohibition in 1933. And to keep the taxes flowing, the denaturing process is still done today. 
Thanks for the history lesson, Michael. Sure, there's a link in the description to an article in Slate about it. The alcohol that I use to clean 3D printed parts is called denatured alcohol, but isopropyl alcohol is also denatured. So is the alcohol used in hand sanitizer and in perfumes. So let's check the smell of the IPA that I ran through here. It took about four hours to process this quart. The smell of the isopropyl after filtration is only a tiny bit milder than what it was before filtration. So almost none of the bitters are being removed. And let's be clear, none of the poison is being removed. You still can't drink it after filtration. You will die a painful, horrible death. Even if you use a distiller to purify it, it will still have the same percentage of water and the same poisonous ingredients after purification. Maybe Walter White could figure out a way to renature alcohol, but you're not going to do it. So just a public service announcement, you cannot distill rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol and make it drinkable. It is still poisonous. Alrighty then. Here is the first batch of denatured. It was clean going in and it's still pure and clean looking now. I got this glass container to dispense alcohol from. I really hate pouring it out of the metal containers because it drips all over everything. This glass container has a stainless steel spigot and I can store it with the lid up so it won't leak. The link is in the description. Now a real test. I collect old dirty alcohol in Prego jars and these jars have been sitting around for a long time, some more than six months. So the particulates have settled to the bottom. I'm gonna sift these through a paint filter and run them through. Here's the second issue. The alcohol in these jars seems sorta of clean after settling, but there were still some resin chunks that made it through. And if the alcohol is very dirty at all, the resin collects on the outside of the filter and clogs it. So I put on a glove and wiped it off with my finger, and then it started dripping again. But this clogging can make it take even longer to filter. Eventually the alcohol will make its way through, but if you put really dirty alcohol in there, it could take a week to filter a gallon. All right, here's my first batch out of the filter. At first glance, it looks pretty clear, but honestly, it's still a little bit yellow. To see how it compares to the fresh alcohol, I'm gonna dump it in the big jar and mix it in with the fresh alcohol. And yeah, now it looks like lemonade, not clear at all. My next mistake was checking to see if it still had resin in it, so I exposed it to UV light and it started curing up. This is after sitting in the sun for an hour. Yeah, it formed a mucus. That was not a smart move. To salvage this batch, I used some cheesecloth to separate the alcohol out from the mucus. I probably lost about 15% of it doing that. I'm not even gonna talk about how difficult it was to clean this jar and dispose of that mucus, because it was, it was gross. After separating out the mucus, <laughs> oh gosh, it's like a horrible thing. It's terrible. After that, I ran the alcohol through my other filter and a day later, that came out a lot clearer. It doesn't look like lemonade anymore. This alcohol, even if it has trace amounts of resin in it, is perfectly fine for cleaning parts because let's be honest, the moment you put a part in the alcohol, it is going to get some resin in there. So this is probably as clean as what it is right after you dip the part in there anyway. But now I'm strictly avoiding allowing this jar to get exposed to UV light because it was a pain to clean and I don't want to have to do that again. So to really test this filtration system out, I'm gonna to try to clean up this super dirty alcohol that I have. I collected the alcohol in a glass jar and let it sit for a while. After about two weeks, most of the resin had settled on the bottom of the jar, but it's still pretty milky up top. Then I set the jar out in the sun for a few hours to try to cure up all the resin in there. After two hours in the sun, it was a solid blob. Usually when it's like this, there's a membrane that you can break and then it'll have alcohol inside. But when I broke up this one, well, it looks like baby puke. Let's see. Yeah, this is done for. There's no salvaging that. So again, the key to this whole thing is to not let the alcohol get that dirty. You gotta filter it after one use. And trying to clean a part in alcohol that's this dirty doesn't work anyway. I think it makes the part even more dirty and causes that film to form on it. Okay, some final thoughts about all of this. First of all, sure, it's a pain in the arse. It takes time and energy and it's a slow process. But on the other hand, it's not that bad. Once you get your routine down, it's not that difficult. Next, I think I'll take these filters apart and make a three bucket double filter because I think with this cheaper brand of filters, it needs two passes to get pretty clear. 
This filter is rated at 0.5 microns, but there are more expensive filters out there rated at 0.3 microns. So that might help, but it would also filter slower than this one. Although you could put two filters in each bucket to double the speed. There will be an upkeep process that has to happen occasionally. I'm not there yet because I've only been doing this for a couple of weeks. But after a while, the outside surface of the filter will get a layer of gunk on it and it will have to be degunked. I think you should be able to filter about 500 gallons of alcohol through each of these filters. The total cost of this filtration system was about $40. And if it can process 1,000 gallons of alcohol, that comes to four cents per gallon, which is a lot better than the $17 a gallon to buy new alcohol. If you liked this project and are considering making it, let me know in the comments and share this video on social media. Also, my channel is not just about resin 3D printing. I also make videos about various projects that I'm making with my 3D printer, using Arduino, Raspberry Pi, coding, LED projects, prop making, toys, and other maker stuff. I have a laser engraver and I have some videos coming out about that. I also just bought a commercial embroidery machine and I'll be making some videos about that. I'll be doing more robotic projects and artistic projects and combining the two. Last summer, I made a little car cup holder robot that has one specific job. That's a really fun video, so please check that out. And I have a large scale robotic project video that should be out really soon. So be sure to check out all the videos on my channel, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. Oh.